Cheers. And welcome to our fireside on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm Steve, here with Pat, Mike, Hoy. Christy, and Kev G. Uh, today I'm drinking Zokovesa uh, Mocha Stout by Stone. It's a collaboration brew. I'm not sure who they collaborated with. Uh, it's really good though, very chocolatey. So it turned out delicious, and that's what's most important. Yes. Right. Dark and heady. Uh, I'm about halfway done with mine now, but. <laughs> um, what are you drinking, Mike? Uh, well, I just finished drinking Sam Adams Summer Ale because it was so delicious. It's all gone now. <laughs> 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 Adver advertising Sanchez dollars can be sent to this address, <laughs> Fulbrook, California. <laughs> no, we're not really putting that on the. On one two three yet. fire pit road. Yeah, one two three. Yeah, that's the real address. I'm sorry, one two three fire pit road. That's what it was. Yeah. No, one two three fake street. Fake street. <laughs> fake street. <laughs> Any town USA, right? Yeah. <laughs> Christy, you still drinking something? I'm still drinking a cab. <laughs> Wine. Uh, moose drool. Stuff's good. What do you got? Uh, I'm drinking uh, fair trade coffee beans crapped out by a starving Ethiopian child. And <laughs> 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 the tears of... Yeah. <laughs> we were up here, now the room's down here. Forced, forced factory <laughs> workers. Starbucks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no longer drinking in the the sweet aroma of freedom. Yeah. Free yeah, sweet nectar of freedom. That's the next beer. Still that. <laughs> Still always that. Always that. Uh, we're going to be talking about intellectual property today. Um, we have, I think, a pretty diverse group on the topic tonight. Um, Pat here, he's done uh, musician, artist, that kind of thing, right? Music, art, terrorism, those kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure that terrorism falls under the intellectual property. Well, if it's a unique it is form of... trying to get paid, uh, sucker. <laughs> if it's a unique form of domestic terrorism... Well, if you're terrorism, trying to get paid, just work for the government. Uh, <laughs> well, you're the one that's a terrorist. Anyway... Mike, you, mm. you had a pat. You tried to get a patent once, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm the guy on uh, the show tonight who is against intellectual property, and at one point I had a provisional patent. So for those who know, or for those who don't know, also, is a uh, provisional patent is a step right before you get a patent. It's you you give all your paperwork and stuff to the patent office, and the patent office says you got 30 days to get all your shit together and resubmit it and make sure it's all kosher, kind of. It's just kind of saying, like, oh, you can do what you need to do and come up with evidence that it is yours, but right now we're saying this is yours until you can give us more evidence that it's yours. It's kind of like a weird, convoluted sort of a deal. Uh, I didn't go through with the patent because at the time, I could probably do it now if I really wanted to, but this was a couple years back before I really knew better. If I really wanted to, I could probably learn how to actually file a patent myself and do all the paperwork, and it, from what I understand... Legal Zoom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or that, yeah. It, it's not It's not actually that difficult. But at the time, I was like, well, I'm going to need a lawyer for this. And lawyers were like, hmm, $10,000. I'm like, oh, well, I guess I'm not getting a patent. And that was the end mm -hmm. of that story. So, um, But looking back on it in retrospect, it probably wasn't anything you know, life-changing or anything that was going to make me billions of dollars. So it's kind of like, eh, you know, not the end of the world. And Christy, you do like web, web design. Web design, um, graphic design, and... My position is I'm a cultural um, intellectual property. I don't believe in the government or any force um, na force of nature, but I do believe in not stealing people's ideas culturally. Culturally. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a programmer, and actually I have three patents. I got through a company, although I'm not very proud of it now. Mm. That was years ago. Gravy. I mean, you know. I haven't done anything for copyright or patents or anything like that, but I have written a little bit. Uh, and I'm 
anti-intellectual property or IP. Um, really didn't really even think about the topic until reading Stephen Kinsella's book, Against Intellectual Property, uh, which really opened my eyes to the whole argument that because ideas are non-rivalrous, they can't be owned as you can own a physical object. Um, Do you want to explain non-rivalrous? But the end product is a product. And it's derived from your creative thought. And depending on, uh, and if the end product is a physical object, then it can be owned. But you would argue that if I have an end product, somebody could take a picture of that end product and resell it. Yes. And I say that's wrong and theft. Copying isn't theft because there's one for you and one for me. Before there was one, and now there's two, because copying isn't theft. Yeah, where are we going with that? I kind of like, I think I don't need to, after, like, after I've said that, I really feel I don't need to say anything else in this conversation, but I probably will anyway. <laughs> well, uh, here's, here's, here's the thing. Suppose, uh, first of all, what are we talking about? Are we talking about patents or copyrights or trademarks? Because we've got... You get you gotta focus on one because maybe a copyright is valid but a patent isn't or a trademark is. Well, I, I get that kind all of thing. Of those so you have to you have to kind of, of focus on all something. All of those to, are designated by the government. I'm gonna say right. they're all invalid because I don't believe in in a government enforcement. We can come up with a third party. Um, I mean, I don't even know if we can come. Maybe we can come up with a third party. I'm more for. Cultural or culturally, is it right to take somebody's product and steal it? Because that's real. Let's just say I, I have a client who spends thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars on a photo, sh photo um, uh, shoot. And they, they hire models, they hire, they, they, they rent the space, they all this to get the photo shoot done. And it's beautiful and it's perfect. And they get these gorgeous shots, uh -huh. and then somebody takes it and copies the shots and now resells those. That's stealing. I'm sorry, that's just stealing. I don't, you know, what, I don't what know are those if pictures we, I don't worth, know, Christy? I don't know if we can even do anything about it on a third-party level. I just look at it from a cultural perspective. I would not want to teach my daughter or children to do something like that, to, to take somebody else's work and make money from it. That, to me, is just wrong. So to me, uh, intellectual property is a cultural. So thing. you're talking it's about ethics and morals, yeah, which are so. it is. which are yeah, totally right. outside of the well, law. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> totally separate from the law. I, I think we can all agree about I, that. I'm ethics totally and morals have nothing to do with the law. Okay. It's where right. Intellectual That's property separate from the law. <laughs> in my book, intellectual property is is something well, see, that is that we've created, and and it and it does step outside it's not it has nothing to do with yes the law is such and such and such but that's not what i'm talking i'm talking more of a cultural thing okay so let me let, let let's break this down okay. a little bit first okay so somebody spends a bunch of money right hires some people right uh takes a bunch of pictures yeah. buys a bunch of equipment to take those pictures right. maybe rents out a space for the day or something. Uh, after say, say they spend a whole day doing this, and they spend a total of a hundred grand. grand. Right. How much are the pictures worth? It's whatever it's worth to them. I don't. It, it could be a big advertising. It's campaign. not though. It's it could be a big advertising campaign. It's worth. It worth. It's worth at least the expenses. It's, it's, it's worth at it's, least the expenses. Not necessarily. Yes. I. If in I, order to duplicate it, you would have to do exactly the same thing. If if I dig a hole that is of no use to me or anybody else, but I spent, you know, a day digging that hole plus equipment that I dug that hole with, that hole is still worth nothing to anyone. No, no, but, but you misunderstand that... I had to outlay, or my client had to outlay a hundred grand to get those shots. Okay, that's that's what it's worth, at least to them. 
It's worth a hundred grand. Sure. All right, and for somebody to get that, maybe that, to somebody else they, they're worthless though. But it's fine. But the but the end result is they're going to get a quality, certain quality, um, end result. And in order to get that, they would have had to have spent a hundred grand. Okay? You're talking about like the goal of business. You know, they they spent that a hundred grand with the expectation of making a profit. I don't know what they were doing with the photos. They spent a hundred grand to get these photos. Okay, sure. it was probably for an ad campaign or something. Sure. Some kind of something. You, but it's, what it sounds like to me they is that you're upset 100. because one person spent a hundred grand and another person spent nothing to get the exact same thing. Yeah, because somebody stole it. They just took another picture of it. Now hold on, Chrissy. Stealing though is a judgment. You. You're not, you're not actually explaining what they're actually doing. Okay, so they took the photograph. Who, who took the photograph? Somebody. Okay. Somebody took the photograph, reproduced it, and is now making money from it. Okay. That's stealing. If I create a photograph and then reproduce it and sell it, how is that stealing? It's not yours to sell. How isn't it? Because you, you just said I, I. I just said I produced a photo, right. reproduced it, and then sold it. How how is it not mine to no, no, sell if somebody's it. willing you to buy it? it? I produced it. Okay. You took it from me and reproduced it. I took what it. from you? You took a, a you took a piece of paper that has a picture on it that is the end result of a hundred grand. How did I get that piece of paper? I don't know. It was some. It was wherever it was. Well, see that that's important. Because if you that gave important. me that piece of paper, and then I took the took that piece of paper with the photos on it and reproduced the photos from that piece of paper and sold those to somebody who would actually buy those copies, I haven't stolen anything because you gave it to me. On the other hand, if I took it without your knowledge, then I am stealing because I took something without your I took something that belonged to you without your permission. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was sitting on a table and you just took it. Then, then, okay, if, I mean, if, if somebody took a physical it's, it's, copy it's, of a photograph, right, you, you had a photograph that you took and you spent, like you were saying, say, $100,000 to create that one photograph of, like, some beautiful models scantily clad in bikinis, because that's what my mind produced. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, let's, let's just say that's what happened, and, and you took that photo, and this is the only copy of that photo shoot, and you left it on a table, and I wander into the studio, and I go... I like this picture and just kind of put it into my obviously because in this scenario I have a gigantic trench coat with a black hat and I put it in there and be like, ah, it's mine. And I wander out. twist your mustache. Yeah, twist my mustache <laughs> and wander out. Then, yes, that is stealing. But if I walk in there with my camera and take a picture of it, that is not stealing if I was allowed okay. into that area. Right, listen, you know what I'm saying? Like, no if you said, hey, can you come in here? I have somebody taking a picture of it. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with somebody taking a picture of it and reselling it. Okay, so from that point, that is the producer, the person who made that photo. That's their responsibility to keep their own product safe. If they did not yeah, take certain steps to take the product it, safe, then that, that's, a fail, the that's a fail on their part. I put it part. on a TV. I put it on whatever. Whether, whether, I, I, whether I use it myself or I sell it, if it's my property, then I should ha I have property. the right. Your it's it, not your You property. said I, you don't have a problem with somebody taking a picture of it. Yeah, but I have a pro Right. I don't have a problem. Correct. By, that means that what's now on my camera is All mine. Right. Culture I think it's wrong for you to take somebody the work of somebody else and resell it. Without giving credit, is that is that is that your linchpin there? Credit, no. credit is is something different. Okay, all right, all right. Because, I like just, if I, I produce a client, if I produce a song, for instance, for a client, and you go and put your name on the on the song and say that you wrote it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that's fraud. Yeah, I've, I've actually that, written every you know. single Immortal Technique song, just so everybody knows. Like, <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course I didn't do that. Yeah, but. So my, if my client spent all this money for an ad campaign and somebody else used it and did another ad campaign, all that money just went up in, in smoke. It really did. It's gone. It's, did it's, he still get the use out of no, that? No, why should he? It's now, it's now reproduced in another ad. It's, 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 so? It, well, no, that doesn't mean you still can't... That doesn't mean you can't still do it yourself. No, 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 no but it's... Yeah. it's 
it's wrong. It's it's wrong. It, to me... You, you haven't told me why it's wrong, though. Because you ruined, you ruined my work. I just ruined it. <laughs> Steve, you. if you want to be in the podcast... <laughs> <laughs> that is a violation of the non-aggression principle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. How, how is it a violation of the non-aggression principle? Because if... Okay. <laughs> Instead of the photograph, <laughs> what about a car? Okay. Do you have the right to hotwire my car and take it? Absolutely not. What the hell's the difference between that and something that somebody has invested $100,000 in? The, because she still has the product that she invested yeah, $100,000 in. Okay. But the value is Now, if I, take your, if I look at your car and I, I reproduce that car, uh, you know... I somehow can look at your car and make an exact copy. I haven't stolen anything from you. You still have your car, and yeah, now I have an exact car. same car. But you, you, yeah, but you've produced about. a car from your own parts. So, and so now we're talking gumption. about. So now we're talking about That's a scale then. Copy. You devalued. No, my, it's the exact you same thing. My, my, from, my okay. I've devalued I'm his not, car I because think. now there's two of them instead of just one. Okay, I'm true. not talking about using the guns of the state. No, we yeah. we understand that nobody's advocating for the state. Well, we should get but yeah. if it was in the beginning, <laughs> you were you were off camera. The parts are <laughs> Could it also be mentioned that if you make a copy of a copy, you're losing fidelity of the original copy? So that if it you're making a copy of a copy, you've lost the original fidelity of the original. Like say, you know, you spent a hundred thousand dollars to make a picture, one picture apparently of of beautiful, scantily clad bikini models, and I walk in with my trench coat and black hat and take a picture with a 9 millimeter camera, because apparently I still have one of those, <laughs> and then I run off. And I have lost the fidelity of the original picture, so therefore it's not worth anywhere near as much as the original. No, but then you use it in another ad campaign, which then... Which, who's going to put that in an ad, though, where there's this shitty picture taken with a 9 millimeter <laughs> camera? You're not going to reuse it, then. No, yeah, yeah, but, but it, let's... Then let's, I don't have a with let, let's, let's really talk about what... What? Let's stop, let's stop beating it around the bush. Okay. We're talking. If, let Let's say the the picture is on a hard drive and you copied right. it, zero for zero, one for one, right. from one That's picture to a, to your picture. If if I had your permission to access that picture in the first place, and, and permission to copy it, then it's not stealing. No matter what I do with my copy. Right. Well, sure. Well, because yeah, you've given I mean, him permission. I would permission. give you permission, but sure. I wouldn't give you permission to do... I would probably give you permission to do whatever I wanted you to do, and if you violated that, then you were violated that. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. We agree on that. Yes. Yes. On, on the other hand, let's say the picture is on a website, free to the, free to the public. Anybody can access this website. I download the picture from the website... That picture is now mine because you've put it out for anybody on the internet and I've copied it and now I can take that picture and do anything I want with it because that picture is now mine. Your picture is still on the website. No, to me, that is where the cultural, where we need to set cultural guidelines where uh, just because it's on the, on the internet doesn't mean it's yours. It's mean you can view it, you can use it, you can download it, but you can't redo something. You can't resell it. You can't reuse it in um, Yeah, I don't understand how coming across something makes, makes it, it yours. yours. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, get that. Here. What if there's a notification on her website that specifically well, says you know, you can't use my stuff unless you ask for my permission, which is really typical. You yeah, see that I mean, out if, there. Yeah. In, in my view, if somebody had put um, uh, some, sort of, some sort of notice on the website that says this is our picture of scantily clad bikini models. You please do not copy this and reproduce it. And you still did that? Yes, that would be immoral. If it said specifically on there, please don't copy this, please don't reproduce this, and you still did it, that would be immoral. I, mean, I could see maybe what? that's something where culturally we have to start putting that on the bottom of everything. I don't have a problem with that. It's kind of like a copyright or a whatever notice. And that may or may not be polite. Not to do it, but I still don't think it's immoral. Okay. 
See, depends this on what you do with This is it. where I'm kind of going over to like Christy's side a little bit. Tell me how that's not immoral, though. It may not be polite, but how is it not immoral to when somebody says, it's please don't do this? It's that's obviously not polite, but if I were to post, for instance, on my car, using his example, please don't copy my car, mm -hmm. and somebody does it anyway, uh, he hasn't stolen my car, he hasn't committed any, <clears throat> any oh, sin. Oh, okay, fine, yeah, it's... Right, and so and I, really, right, the okay. difference between that picture and the car is just difficulty of copying. Fair enough. It's okay. easy to copy zeros and ones. It's not so easy to copy uh, a whole car or, you know, the design of a chair or, you know, anything yeah. physical. Right. And that's changing slightly. but Yeah, with printing. But still, like, I mean, I, I ran into this with my kids recently. Um they were playing at a uh, state park, and um, right. they came across like a um, a box, like a utility box of some kind. <laughs> like um, it was something that somebody hacked together. You know, it was like pieces of pallet, but it was protecting like sprinkler valves or something uh -huh. like that. And uh, you know, they're like eight and four, and they're young. And so they came across this thing, and they're like, "Oh, look at this rickety old box. Let's jump on it." And they like mashed it to pieces. And the rangers, like, chase them down. Oh. And um, so I was like, I had this moment. I was like, I didn't know what they had done. But I was like, clearly they've done something wrong. Because they're running away. <laughs> and here comes a park ranger car. Well, and well, I'm like, it, looking well, it at a, it. And I'm like. It was a government agent. So they might not have done something wrong. Good point. <laughs> Fair. And so that was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> as, the Lord, as the lawyers would say, you're assuming facts, not in evidence. You right. saw somebody running. And there was yeah. uh, a government enforcement agency coming after them that does not necessarily did something yes. wrong. Right. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so I was going, okay, I don't know what the situation is here, but let me talk to my kids and see what's going on. And so they, tol they told me the story, and the park ranger is still sitting up on the hill, and he's like on his bullhorn, like, saying, kids, or whatever. You bratty kids. Walk, walk, walk. I don't know. It sounded the same to me. Right. It sounded the same to me as it did to them, like the teacher and Charlie Brown. You know. Yeah. The older I get, the uh, more I hear government agencies sound like Charlie Brown. Right. Talk, Charlie Brown yeah. teacher. I swear to God. And um, <laughs> so I said, okay, so tell, so tell me what happened. They told me what happened, and they said, are you going to make us go talk to the ranger? And uh, after they told me everything, like, oh, we found this old ratty box, and we're jumping on it, and we broke it. And I was like, I looked up at the ranger, and I was like, God, I don't want to have this conversation. No, <laughs> you don't have to go talk to the ranger. I'll go talk to the ranger for you. And so I started to walk, and the ranger drove away. Thank goodness. <laughs> they didn't have to deal with that, because it was probably not going to be nice. Right. But um, I went back to my kids, and I said, listen, you have to understand that wasn't yours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you came across that and it wasn't yours. They said, but who would want this ratty old nasty box? And like, I'll equate that to like somebody coming across one of my MP3s. Who would want this ratty old nasty underground white kid hip hop song? You know, <laughs> I, like they might come across it and think like, this is bollocks, you know, like, let me, let me just whatever with it. And it's no big deal. But I mean, that was mine, you know. No lies. Hmm? No, no his, lies. His. No, he's no, talking about his own no. personal. His own. His own. His own. Vanilla Ice was not underground. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess to but. just to stick with the theme on that is okay. So let's let's say your 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 kids had created a uh, a similar box, created out of an old. Busted Palette. up pallet. Let's just and, say they and, duplicated and, and, and the assembly. Box. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They duplicated and then destroyed it. Would that be wrong? It's created their own box. Theory. Yeah, exactly the same thing. They they they, they got they, they got, saw the box and then, said that would be interesting to destroy. That's <laughs> their own box. No, that's yeah. that's it's not, not the same as making a copy. Principle. And and I, I guess that's, they did that's make where a I'm copy, on it. Though. They did make a copy, but they didn't facsimile it. So, to use a different word. So for and they didn't take a picture of it. So I see. I see oh, no. the difference as degree rather than. I guess so. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really right. simple. If it does not violate the non-aggression principle, there's nothing wrong with it. If if it is, if you have not violated that person's property. But if, he's if someone says this is my shit and don't touch my shit, this <laughs> is mine. <laughs> Okay, because if we if we don't own ourselves and we don't we 
we can't own our property, then wh what the hell do we have? I mean, right. this is communism, right? So I mean, I, it, I agree with everything you just said. Okay, so <laughs> all I've ever said is that I think that in a free and stateless society, there could be uh, provisions, whatever. It could be part of the, you know, DROs, whatever Rothbard talked about, where <clears throat> when people steal somebody's property um, and it's a clear violation of the non-aggression principle, then, you know, they need to compensate you or whatever, you know. I mean, I, again, I'm not suggesting that there be, you know, thugs with costumes and shiny badges showing up breaking down doors but I just think it's I, I, I look at it from the moral standpoint and I, granted and I, I just kind of think that some of that IP stuff I think people are kind of I don't know man because I, I have not heard an argument yet and I've I've heard Kinsella a lot I have not heard an argument yet that, that I, no I disagree on Kinsella mm -hmm. on his view of how property is acquired uh, and that that makes my argument slightly different uh, on the IP. So is it, is it only topic, IP that we're talking about here? That, it, that, and then the that's question the topic, I, I, I think. Because, <laughs> well, no, not just us, but yeah. like I know Kinsella. That's his thing is IP. Well, he my was thing a... is where does IP end in my property, my physical property? Okay, so what's rivalrous? Pardon me. That's the one. Rivalrous. Yeah. Rivalrous? It's an economic heard. term that basically means that two people can't own the same object. Okay. Well, they so, they, they can, so... Well, they can share, they but, can that share. Would, but that would be an agreement yeah. between right. the two of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay. but they, can't they can't own it exclusively both okay. at the same time. Right, yeah. Well, they can't maybe possess it at the same time, but two... Well, a car, two people could own have co-ownership in a car. Okay, you're getting not, in it. You're, you're not you're not getting the concept though. No, I'm what not. I'm saying is Sorry. <laughs> you and I can't both hold the exact same object at the same time. You can hold it at one time, I can hold it at another time. That makes it rivalrous because it because there could be a rivalry, so to speak. Oh, that's uh, <clears throat> over who owns the object. Because well, we both can't have it at the exact same time. Well, what if the what if the object is a rope going across a train track and a, and a, and a, and a train left St. Louis <laughs> at two thirty and another train left <laughs> Kansas City at two forty five? When will they meet? And I and I had a, <laughs> and I had a basket of apples <laughs> well, yes, and you took half <laughs> and where are all my apples? <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, that the IP thing, where it's cool to take your stuff as long as you thought about it, and it's like you know, digits, digital or something, that that's okay to take. I is just he, don't get it that, when it lets we're, say we're, I, I, we're having we're talking a different language here though. I think when you say take, you mean copy though. Because you still have the item. Copy. No, if let's say if I have, let's say it's out of like, like your beer. Let's, like, let's talk mm -hmm. about your beer right now. If mm -hmm. I were to take your beer, you would no longer have your beer. Mm -hmm. If I were to copy it, then you would still have your beer, and now I would have a beer, too. But it's different okay, on well, a digital means. Because you now, you just took well, the original. And I haven't taken something. the original. No, the original stayed you, where it's at. Okay, but let's say you did, and then you did something with it. Hold, hold on, uh, you, hold on. So you know, okay, okay. I got one. I have one question, real quick. Okay, all right, all right. Because I was <laughs> going to get to that. I, yeah. I think you're going to ask okay, the exact okay. same question. Well, so I'll so let if, you do if it. you're if you're going to create an algorithm that would that you would put inside, let's say, a sex robot. Let's just say that it's a sex <laughs> robot. So you create that algorithm, <laughs> oh and then somebody goodness. downloads that algorithm and copies it oh, and puts it in their own sex robot. Would that then would that mean that you copied their own sex robot if it looked identical and it wasn't? You know and what I mean? And we're like, out of time. Yeah, sorry <laughs> if we were talking now. <laughs> well, I think we just got in the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there was definitely a long conversation just for sure. Do a <laughs> just the, just the tip. <laughs> so, yeah, just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Have a good weekend. Like, <laughs>